Welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by TheVirtualInstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com, and welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, the greatest live broadcast in all of YouTube. And this is going to be season 10, and it's going to be... I, well, we hope it knocks your socks off, uh, literally. Mm -hmm. um, I hope everybody's doing fantastic. I know that a lot of you are excited for the premiere of season 10, and Ashley and I are super excited too, because this season is gonna be unlike any other Getting Sketchy season prior. We're still gonna be working from photo references, but we're gonna be installing a big, or instilling, instilling is the word, mm -hmm. a big helping of creativity. So this season is all about creativity. And before we get into how this uh, season is going to work, I'd just like to say hello to Ashley over there. How are you doing today? I'm doing really well, Matt. Thank you for asking. It is great to be back with you guys. I don't know if this was a longer break between seasons, but it felt longer. So I'm totally refreshed and ready to exhaust myself over the last 11 weeks or the next 11 weeks um, drawing along with you guys. And I hope you're ready to get exhausted too. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you are watching this live, of course, there's a chat box on YouTube. You can, of course, ask questions or make comments during tonight's broadcast. If you do have a question or comment that's directed at Ashley or I, if you'll put that in all capital letters, that'll help us see it a little bit easier right. amongst all the other comments and questions. And I will be working from a photo reference tonight. To find that photo reference, what you need to do is go to the YouTube channel. So you'll go to the channel by clicking on the little icon of my face underneath the video and look for the community tab and underneath the community tab you will see the photo reference that i'm working from you might have to scroll down a little bit to see it but it's there and i'll have it on my screen as well now while you're over at the community tab i encourage you to vote for next week's episode that's right at the end of tonight's broadcast we're going to reveal what ashley is going to be drawing next week well not we're not what he's going to be drawing but the prompt that he's going to be responding mm -hmm. to at the end of tonight's episode. So while you're over there on the community tab, you will see that poll. When I'm finished with my, with my drawing tonight, I will reveal what you guys have voted on uh, for next week. And that's how this season's going to go down. We're going to have prompt, uh, prompts, or not prompts. We're going to have prompts, and these are creative prompts. Now, you're just seeing phrases. You don't really know what the prompt is. You can try to figure out what it is, uh, but you're seeing phrases and you're voting on those phrases. And then there is a actual prompt behind each one of those phrases, which is a, a creative challenge to creating a piece of artwork. Mm -hmm. um, and that is the whole premise of this season. Now, if uh, you are new to the channel, uh, of course, I would encourage you to subscribe to the channel, of course. And if you like this video, um, make sure you click on the like button. That'll definitely help us out as well. And, um, you know, we're I'm at 800 and some thousand subscribers. It's getting pretty close to a million. I sure would love to see a million subscribers on there. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please, I would encourage you to do so. Uh, that way you won't miss a Getting Sketchy episode because you'll get notified and you'll also be notified when new regular videos, uh, you know, not the live ones, are posted as well. And if you want to go a little bit deeper with your drawing and painting, uh, of course, there's a membership program over at thevirtualinstructor.com. There you'll find a variety of drawing and painting courses on a variety of subject matter and media. And all of the courses, all the drawing and painting courses are included with the membership program. There's also weekly live lessons. So after we're done here on YouTube, I'm going to be continuing the series that I'm working on where we're drawing sneakers with pen and ink. And that is for members. And all of our recorded live lessons are there for you in the vault too. And they go all the way back to 2000. And uh, 12, I think, is when I started uh, doing the, the live broadcast. Mm -hmm. But they're all there, so you can go back and watch all of them. Plus, there are weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute and a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. Of course, if you want to learn more about the membership program, there's a link in the description below. And if you want to just check out three of the course videos and ebooks for free to get a little sampling of what uh, the course videos and ebooks are like, there's a link for that as well. And that will also put you on the newsletter list so that you can be updated uh, when a bunch of new content is added to the site. Just sent out a newsletter a couple of days ago. Um, let's see, am I missing something? I feel like I'm missing something. I don't know. I was looking at the I was looking at the comments in the last yeah. few minutes while you were talking. So I'm not yeah. sure if you missed anything in our introduction, but we did have a question from Melody about the community tab and where to find that again. The community tab again mm -hmm. is on the YouTube channel. So you have to click on my face, the icon of my face. And then in the middle of that screen, you'll see a menu. 
And one of those options is the community tab, and that's where that is. Um, so you have to go to the YouTube channel first, and then just click on the uh, community tab, and that's where you'll find uh, the photo reference and also the poll. Uh, I remember what I was I was going to say. Okay, um, super. I think I I did, and then I forgot. Uh, we've already talked about the photo reference, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think I think oh, the materials. Yeah, the materials I'm going to be using tonight. Mm. There are links. Uh, below this video, if you want to use the same materials that I'm using, uh, you don't have to use the same materials that I'm using, but for those of you who want to, there are links below this video. Those are affiliate links. That means if you click on them and you buy from um, buy them from those links, then we do receive a commission. Um, all right. Are we ready to get into season 10? Yeah, I think I'm so. so excited. I can't wait so to far. reveal what season 10 is going to be about. I can't you know, it's really a <laughs> It's really a combination of... Of, um, of ideas that you guys have presented with us uh, or to us before. Some of you have yeah. wanted to be able to choose what we draw. And so this is, I feel like this is a happy medium between us choosing what we draw and you guys having having your, uh, having your some input as well. Yeah, having some say so. Yeah. Um, and uh, Janine is asking, how do we see the prompt? I haven't shown you the prompt yet. Uh, you're voting for phrases that represent the prompt. It'll all make sense in just a yeah. second. So without further ado, now this, this whole season is based around a game show theme. So let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Let's Get Creative with your contestants, Matt and Ashley. And now tonight's Let's Get Creative Challenge. Okay, so as you can see, I am surrounded by a plethora of prompts. Now, one of these prompts has already been chosen by you guys. I sent out a newsletter yesterday asking for people to vote, and uh, you voted. And one of these prompts has already won, and that is the prompt that we're going to be doing tonight. Tonight, um, So I guess we're ready to find out what prompt that is. Yes, let's so, see what's uh, happening. So let me go ahead and push the button. No whammy. No way. No whammies. Oh, and there's the prompt. Don't give me no lines. That's what you guys voted for. So what does that mean? Don't give well, me no lines. the prompt don't give me no lines is create a drawing without using lines. You can only use colors and or values. So that's what I'm gonna be doing tonight. I'm going to be only using lines, colors, and not not lines. Not I'm lines. only using not colors lines. and values. Out of and we're gonna be working with pastels on gray and gray paper. So let's go ahead and switch over and get into this. All right, here's a look at the photo Ooh. reference that I'm gonna be working from right up here in the corner. And I tried to find something that was interesting, but also had kind of a little bit of an abstract feel mm -hmm. and also didn't have any defined lines. Now, it, we can we can argue about what is a line and what is not a line. Sure. And, and there are going to be some marks that I make tonight <laughs> that some of you are going to say, well, wait a minute, that's a line. But I am not going to be thinking in a linear fashion. Instead, I'm going to be thinking of fields of color and value. Mm -hmm. um, the size of the paper that I'm working on is seven and a quarter inches tall by seven inches. So it's almost square, but not quite. This is somewhat proportional to the photo reference that I'm working from. And this photo reference is from Pixabay, Pixabay but I did edit it. Edit it. Uh, I cropped it down and uh, changed the colors. Um, a pretty the crop is pretty dramatic uh, mm -hmm. compared to the original photo but that's what we're going to be working from now i have already isolated a few colors uh, ahead of time um, very good and uh, these are the colors i'm going to limit myself to now these are rembrandt pastels that i'm going to be using again you can use any soft pastel that you want i'm sure people are wondering can you use oil pastels? Sure, you can use any medium that you want. You don't even have to use pastels if you don't want to. You can do this in charcoal or, or graphite or, or however you want to go about it. Uh, but I'm going to be using these pastels and we're going to be thinking about values and colors and uh, trying to forget the lines. Now, normally what I would do is I would draw a line right across here <laughs> to, to begin with. But uh, since I'm going to avoid making any lines and only consider the values, um, I'm not going to start that way this evening. Instead, I'm going to think only of colors and values. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to bring up the timer. I will have 45 minutes here to complete this drawing. 
So we'll go ahead and get There's started. There's timer. the timer. And I'm going to start with uh, a color that is going to kind of be the base color for the background. So this is kind of a darker blue. And I'm going to bring this down a little bit. So instead of creating a line across the middle of the picture plane, I'm using this darker blue to kind of create an edge, so to speak. Yeah, that's right. Edges instead of lines. That's kind of what we're going for here. Now this paper, for those of you who are wondering, it's got the same tooth or texture as charcoal paper. It's just gray. Uh, that's really... Yeah, notice it's got the laid pattern on it. Yeah, it's that's really the only difference mm -hmm. there. So Now I'm going to be blending two with my fingers. And so I've got a moistened paper towel here handy. Um, now there was a question from Nicole. She says... Wouldn't it be best to make it black and white so you can see the value first? And I believe she means like the reference to, to it, analyze the reference in black and white. Uh, sure. If I was doing this drawing in black and white, I would definitely change the reference to black and white. But the values are still there. Yeah, the values are still there. Value is not separate from color. It's a characteristic of color. Yeah. Um, now, sometimes some colors... Do make it a little hard to judge the values. You know, sometimes I perceive reds as being lighter than they are when uh, when I look at them in black and white. So you might want to use a black and white version just to sort of um, just to maybe check yourself and verify that the values that you believe you're seeing in the color is accurate. And it looks like Buddy had a good suggestion of maybe or maybe it was someone else. Uh, I think it was Buddy to use your phone and switch it to a grayscale and take a look at the reference um, you know, on your screen through your phone just to verify how light or dark maybe you believe that, uh, that blue-green is there in the middle, that kind of yeah, a thing. Value is the darkness or lightness of a color. Mm -hmm. um, and so color has different properties. Intensity is another property of color. And the hue is a property of color as well. Um, but value is how dark or light the color is. So we want to match the values. Of course, that's probably more important than matching the colors. There's Definitely. no probably about it. It is more important. But um, I'm trying to do uh, kind of both in the same swath there. All right, before coming back to this background, I'm going to go ahead and move down to the middle ground. And uh, let's pick, let's see, this is going to be a combination of colors here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start with this light blue and I'm again I'm using the side of the, the pastel to avoid making lines <laughs> it's a little bit more like painting you know you're making broader marks or strokes you could argue the strokes are lines but you could argue that lines are skinny shapes so it's all arguable I like to think of lines as skinny shapes yeah, lines are kind of skinny shapes, and line can be thick and thin and so yeah. on. So I'm, you know, in the technical sense of the word, I will be using lines tonight, <laughs> but I am not drawing in terms of lines, and which is ironic because the next hour, uh, when we do the live lesson, I am only using lines. <laughs> That's right. Uh, because, uh, right not now just we, for outlines, but for right. shading as well. Right, because uh, that series is in pen and ink, and uh, of course... Pen, line is so incredibly important in pen and ink. All right, so let's add a little bit more depth to that color. I've got a kind of a blue green here. I'm gonna mix it right over the top and the wave kind of curls around here. So I'm gonna kind of let my strokes kind of do the same thing here. Start following the contours of the wave. Yeah, you can for see, the most you can part. See now some it's kind of concave here. There. Yeah. Matt, did you give us the paper size? I don't remember. Yes, it is seven and a quarter inches tall by seven inches wide. Okay. Yeah, I could tell it wasn't quite a square, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, it's not quite ratio. a square, but it's pretty darn close. Mm -hmm. So you can see the in gray paper kind of. Uh, holds the pastel material in place, just like you would expect, just like with charcoal paper. I'll go ahead and give that a blend with my finger. And a lot my of people ask me, when I'm blending, how do I make sure I don't contaminate the surface? 
well, sometimes I don't even think about it, but I also kind of try to keep a different finger for each color. You can see I completely went against that. <laughs> um, but that is one way that you can kind of do that. Now the wave is curving this direction on the outside, but on the inside, it's curving the opposite direction. I don't know if that's the opposite direction or not, but it's a different direction. All right, let's continue to go ahead and just add some of the darker values down here. So I'm going to start with that dark blue that we started with at the top of the picture plane. And we'll just bring this up in here. So again, I'm thinking about fields of color. And just like uh, color or value, however you want to think about it, um, and just like I would with a painting, I'm going to start with kind of larger shapes of color and value and then work my way to smaller shapes of color and value. So that's why I'm covering the entire surface here initially with these colors. I'll let some of that blend into each other yeah, you've here. already almost got it blocked in. Yeah, almost the initial block Our Base colors. There. Now some of these areas down here at the bottom are pretty dark. So we're going to use a little bit of this uh, blue-purple here, almost kind of a gray. Yeah, it's pretty dull down there. It's, I love the way the sea foam, you know, lies on top of the ocean. Oh, it kind of curls up into the wave. That's going to be it's the fun part. Cool, yeah. Now, what kind of paper is this one more time? This is Ingray paper. Okay. I-N-G-R-E-S. Yeah. I just wanted to hear you say it. You just <laughs> wanted to make me say it yeah. again. Yeah. All right, uh, the values down here at the bottom are pretty dark, so I'm going to use a little bit of black. And black is so strong that I'm going to kind of use it pretty sparingly. I'm barely touching the surface here with the black. But I do need some of these values to be a little bit darker. And the reason why we need them to be so dark is so that we have the contrast that we need for the upper part of the picture plane. All right, let's yeah, go I ahead. I guess and this wave is backlit a little bit, so you just have those spots of sun hitting the top of this. Well, of the yeah, spray. it looks like the light actually may be coming kind of, from the left side a little bit, kind of backlit. It's, it's looking like it's coming through the wave a little bit there yeah. on, the, on, the, on the left. All right. Now let's see if we can pull in a little bit of green here. So I've got a little bit of green, and we're just going to go right in this transition area. I'm not going to let it get too green. I'm going to give it a little bit of added interest there, a little bit of variety in the color. Oh, yeah. Let some of that green sit right down there, too. Now I'm going to use a different finger because i got black on my finger. I want to kind of avoid that. I guess you can use your fingers on per like choose the color finger you need to mix in with another color sometimes. Uh, I guess you could. Kind of like we use dirty You could also lick your fingers to clean them. Mm. There's lots of things you can do that <laughs> so many of those things I wouldn't recommend doing. Um, <laughs> Now, you'll notice that the colors are a little bit different than the reference, and that's okay. Remember, this is if the values are close, that's what's most important. All right, I'm that's actually right. going to you see my fingers are kind of a mess here, so I'm going to give them a quick dab with the, the moistened paper towel. And I don't have to have them completely clean, but I can have them a little bit more clean than they are now. Just get that loose powder off. Yeah, just get a little bit of that off. All right, let's go back here with... Um, Edie noticed that you're not wearing any Band-Aids, so... I'm not, but I could. I could be wearing Band-Aids <laughs> uh, because I do have some boo-boos, but they're kind of hidden right now, so I don't have to wear a Band-Aid. Buddy has a comment. She says, I am currently working with pastel on a landscape and finally found out why it takes me so long. And we may have talked a little bit about the length of time artwork takes in the live lesson last week, I believe. Um, we talk about she, that a lot. She goes on to say that she believes she overlooks, not necessarily overworks sometimes, but overlooks. So maybe just, well, just, just looking for things that aren't there and possibly, I'm not sure. Well, I thought it was interesting, and I commented to you about this. Uh, before we went live, somebody 
or, or right after we went live. I can't remember if it was before we went live or after. Yeah. Anyway, somebody was coming in that they thought that I was a line guy. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I wonder that. if that means that they think I'm, I'm, you know, throwing the lines on the ladies. Is that what, <laughs> yeah. is that, what that means? Um, all right, this is kind of a minty green up here. Just going to add a little bit of variety up here in the wave. And these look like lines. I, I can't have lines. I'm trying to use That's the right. side of the pastel. I'm, I'm trying not to use lines here. I think that needs to be actually a little bit lighter still here, maybe. You know, I was I was sort of trained to, to, to maybe use lines to begin artwork, but to try to work away from them as fast as I could um, to make my artwork feel more realistic and or representational, I guess, more representational, I should say. And uh, the reason I was given when I was a student was that there aren't any lines in life. And so they're really, you know, lines are abstract representations of edges. And so it's okay to just have edges. It's okay to have soft edges. And it's okay to lose your edges sometimes because that's how things look in real life. Sometimes we really can't see where one part clearly begins and another part ends. You know, uh, it could be background and foreground, that kind of a thing. So I really took that to heart and um, when I was young. And I typically try to try to at least let my lines sort of melt into the shading at some point. But I know a lot of artists um, use line in a really effective way for accents um, in their artwork and for, um, I mean, I guess you can use, you know, lines are just, just another element of art. So you could add more or less line in places to create clarity, but also um, visual weight, that kind of a thing. But I've always tried to Try to work away from them after I get started in an artwork. All right, this color is actually a, a light purple that I've mm. been adding here, uh, kind of pulling up the strokes in the direction that the wave is bending over, and then doing a little subtle blend. And we'll just bring that all the way over here. Looks like this part kind of comes all the way down here and kind of curls around. And then it kind of isolates mm -hmm. that little light area right there. So this is kind of just a base application. Then we'll push the value range after we've got it in place and also add some of the details here or insinuate some of the details. We're, this is going to still be a softer drawing. I want to try to capture the movement of the wave and kind of create a, a piece that's uh, somewhat abstract. We could consider it a little bit abstract. We still want it to look like a wave, of course, mm -hmm. but And uh, off here in the background, uh, let's add, let's see, we need, let's see, is that dark enough? That's not quite dark enough. Is that dark enough? Well, it's going to give us a little bit of variety. So this is gray, and we're just going to put a little bit more variety in that background before we start putting some of those lighter values. Because there are some highlights and things that are happening back there. But we want to have a little bit more variety before we do that yeah and maybe even a little bit of some blue or green brent does art asks are rembrandt pastels a little harder than sennelier and sabrina says that she believes so what about what's your experience well with those yeah and there's there's even variety in the hardness or softness of the pastel within the brand mm. uh, some colors are just harder um, because maybe of the concentration of the pigment i'm not really sure why but uh, for example this blue is pretty hard and uh, i found that some colors are hard to layer over the top of areas that you've already got in place mm. because of their hardness for whatever reason uh, so there is a little bit of variety there to be aware of all right, let's go with a light gray here and uh, start putting a little bit of variety back here. Again, this, these, are, these are linear shapes, but they're not lines. I promise. <laughs> they're just marks. They have to I mean they're small they're just marks. marks yeah. in, a, in a row, we'll call them. We'll say, they're marks in a row. So <laughs> now I bet some of you are really curious about the prompts because maybe the don't give me no lines was pretty obvious. I don't mm -hmm. know. Um, but probably not obvious to everybody. So now you can guess what you think the prompts mean while you're selecting one. Right. 
Well, Marie says she's really liking how this is turning out, that it's looking great. Uh, thank you, Marie. And uh, Carter asks, would you consider shading waves to be like shading mountains? Um, I guess, I, you know, I don't really think of it as like in terms of a physical object. I'm yeah. thinking of it in terms of shapes of color and value. And um, it really doesn't matter what we're creating here. It's it, what matters is um, it does matter what we're creating. Um, but the way we think about it when we're creating it, it doesn't matter yeah. if we're, if we're drawing or painting mountains or if we're drawing or painting, um, waves, you're going to use the same elements and principles of art over and over to greater or lesser degree, you know, which element dominates depending on the subject. Exactly. Mountains it's still and process. waves are both forms, right? They're kind of forms that rise up from a flatter surface. So in that way, they're similar. It, it's still a process of, of noticing the shapes of color and value and adding mm -hmm. them. Yeah, that's the, I mean, that's really the, in my estimation, shapes is where it's at. You know, I talked about that a lot in, my, in a class period just earlier today with one of my students. We took a photograph that he was working from, um, an extra copy, and we drew lines around all of the shapes of values. And he just couldn't believe how they popped out after that. He could see them after that. And he'll see them forever now. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, it's a great exercise. Just so this is now a lighter gray that I'm going back in. And I'm making linear shapes, <laughs> not lines. Long shapes. Just some linear shapes going on here. And I think that is something that holds a lot of people back is they think that there is, you know, they think, uh, hey, I'm 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 drawing mountains, for example, just to use what we were talking about. Um, I I need to think about how you draw a mountain. Um, when how you draw a mountain is not any different than how you would draw any other object, like a can of soup or something. Right, you know? something that's not necessarily organic. Right, it's mm -hmm. the same. It's not the same process, but the, it's the same thought process that you go through as an artist. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of a hint of green back here and uh, just to tie it in with the foreground. I feel like there's a little hint of that green back there. And again, I have limited myself to these colors, so uh, I'm not going to grab my big pastel set and and change my mind now. <laughs> no, no, I like the Although I'm I like tempted. the warm, cool relationship you've got going on in the in the wave. Well, it's all cool right now. It's a little bit warmer on the L left. A little warmer. Yeah. It's going to get a lot warmer, I think. <laughs> um, let's now, see um, here. I got, I got yellow. I got a yellow green here on my thing. All so. right. Karen had a question before. She'd missed the beginning and asked, were there alternate materials discussed? And there were. Um, you mentioned in your own comment using new pastels or Mitant's paper. That would be a great alternative. And you That's, can also use oil pastels. Yeah, new pastels is not really uh, an alternative Yeah, material. it's just another. That's, I mean, I know they're a little bit harder, but they're still pastels. Yeah. And, you, and you, know, you could uh, work a little bit smaller than Matt is and execute this drawing. Well, possibly with a colored pencil. It's ooh, a little different. Ooh, that would be hard. He's working with light marks over dark. So it would be pretty challenging in colored pencil. But challenge yourself. <laughs> It would be hard to do this drawing without lines with colored pencils. Yeah, yeah it would. <laughs> I don't even know. I'm going to have to, I'd have to get quiet and think about that for a little bit, just how to get started or where to, where to get started. All right. I think I'm spending too much time back here. Uh, let's We've go We've got ahead. 20 cynics minutes left. And you already have a lot of um, nice color relationships and some gradation in there, some texture in the background. So. All right, well, let's start working yeah, here to, to the middle ground. The and that sea spray is what I'm going to add towards the end. Okay? Yeah, that's so. what I'm, I think that's what we're all real curious about. Yeah. All right, I feel like there should be a little bit more green in here. So I'm going to pull a little bit more green in here. And then we'll go back over the top of it with that kind of turquoise color. I just feel like the blue I've got is not... And I don't, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to match it or not, but I feel like it needs to have just a little bit more green in there. Now we'll go back to that turquoise color, this turquoise color. Mm -hmm. 
Now, Russ had a comment a few minutes ago. He said, um, and I think we were talking about, you know, drawing mountains versus something else and what's the difference or is there a difference? And Russ says, didn't Betty Edwards say not to think about the object at all? And uh, I don't know who Betty Edwards is. So Betty Edwards right. wrote Drawing on the Right Side I, of the Brain. I, I was going to make that. I was going to make that guess. I read that so long ago. I can't remember the name of the author, but I have uh, a copy. <laughs> Still. Yeah, it's been a long time since yeah. I've read the book too, but uh, that doesn't surprise me. I mean, mm -hmm. that that. Uh, and we actually kind of have a prompt for that, so we'll be talking about this more through the season. And and what was that again? The the comment. Or the prompt. The, the comment. That Betty Edwards says. I'm trying to place it with the prompt. Not I, to think about the object at all. Oh, okay. I got you. I had to yeah, give him I was trying to signals. remember. I was giving him hand signals. Which in the one <laughs> that went with. And uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, time for some purple. Let's. Uh, well, let's. Yeah, let's start with the dark purple here. I'm going to start with a little bit of purple. All right. Along here. I'm going to pull that up. Get a little bit more color in here, and then bring that right across the middle here. Kind of make yeah, I see that in there now. Marks. It's subtle. Yeah, I mean, you were already using that grayish, light grayish purple there already. Yeah, and I'm going to go back over the top of this with um, some some more neutral yeah. colors too. But I'm just trying to get that color in there, kind of underneath, and. Uh, Who would have thought there's purple, purple in the water? Judy says, glad you guys are back. Always enjoy the show. Yeah, right. We're glad to be back. Now, last week, um, I think last Thursday, my mom gave me a call and she said, hey, I watched you guys last night. <laughs> so I don't think uh, so I had to explain to her the difference between recorded and live video. Because, uh, mom, if you're watching tonight, I hope you're I hope you're watching the right one. <laughs> it's not a recording. All right. So this is that light purple that we used initially. That's just going to soften that color. And uh, let's go ahead and bring that all the way across here. And I haven't even looked at the clock. We hit 22, 22 minutes. minutes. We're in the halfway point. And that background is looks good. It's well developed. You're not really missing anything with the sea spray up there. So you focus on the wave and that All right. uh, sea foam at the bottom. Let's get a little bit more blue in some of these areas here. I like that. You know, this picture is... Um, and you can, I mean, you can really tell you've cropped it out of something that's larger. It's really just a little section of a wave that breaks the composition into three big bands. You know, you got the big right. band at the bottom. It's kind of triangular shaped. And then the, the band to the middle of the breaking wave. And then almost a stripe at the top. And it reminds me of color field paintings, right? You know, where there's just a color up against another color. And you get to think about that. And I ask myself, you know. This this artwork kind of kind of does the same thing as a color filled painting, but it gives us more to look at. It's it's more interesting to see. So I think about those paintings from the uh, mid twentieth century that were sometimes just a couple or or maybe a few different colors painted together on a on a composite. And it's not really much of a composition, but uh, in a rectangle. And uh, I really don't see much difference between those and, and what Matt's doing now, um, except for uh, the variety and the excitement that you get from, from the actual wave. So I really like what Matt said. He tried to approach this composition in an abstract way or kind of uh, crop it in that way because, um, you know, we can work representationally and also have sort of a des an abstract design quality in our representational artwork. That I think people who appreciate abstract art um, can also appreciate. I keep picking up the. I want to pick up this turquoise color, and I keep picking up a lighter blue. I don't know if that is. I guess those color field paintings—they were more non-objective, weren't they? Are you talking about like stuff like like Mark Rothko and stuff? Yeah. yeah. That was totally non-objective. Just yeah, I, I said abstract. I, they're really non-objective. 
but uh, you know, there's still color and shape, and that's what Matt's working with tonight, color and shape, in addition to texture and, and form also. Now I'm bringing in a little bit of this uh, this gray. It's it says it's a blue gray, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I'm guessing that uh, they're considering this to be a cool gray. I think that's pretty safe. If yeah. It says blue gray on the side, um, and that is just to kind of tone down the intensity of the color a little bit, get a little bit more variety in there, and. Let's see, do I want to go that dark up here? I feel like there's just kind of some wrinkly things happening up here and they just need to be a little bit darker. That are not lines, it's not lines. Linear shapes. And we'll soften it with the, the turquoise yeah, color. And you know, the prompt drawing without lines, it was really drawing without like outside contour lines you know, to get started with. We still have to make marks. Those marks come together. All right, Jennifer says, uh, Matt, I would believe there is that there is purple in the water. I was on the beach with my daughter on Sunday, and as I sat looking at the sun on the water, I commented that the water looked pinkish purple. I wonder if it was in the evening, you know, that last, that 20 minutes of beautiful pink light that, that we sometimes are blessed to to receive in the evenings it's the most beautiful light it's kind of it's kind of pink all right are we ready to really add the contrast here let's i feel like mm. we need to work a little bit more with some of these blues and greens down here let's bring a little bit of black up here Oh, Lynn comments, uh, the pink and violets are from the sun at certain times of the day, especially at sunset. And one of my favorite paintings by John Singer Sargent is of uh, two, two little girls lighting lanterns, I um, mean you know, like paper lanterns in front of a, a, maybe a, a bush or a shrub that feel like it was feel like it was was growing lilies maybe white lilies but um it, it he captured that special moment in the evenings where the light kind of turns pink and uh, so if, if you want to see a painting that was really dedicated to that light um there is that painting by john singer Sargent of two little girls lighting lanterns and speaking of making things lighter, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and start working on some of this spray that's happening here. And we might need to make some of the areas behind it a little bit darker. We'll see. We'll go ahead and start. I, I already feel like this right here needs to be a little bit darker. I wish I had just a subtly darker gray, but I don't. So let's try a subtly darker blue. That's not really that dark. Well, that that uh, the purple that Jennifer was observing was a little bit early, around 3 o'clock today in the UK. So a little earlier than sunset, but you were still picking up those hues. Very cool. Maybe it's a crimson Todd. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now let's go back to the gray. And this needs to be actually a little bit darker. And we'll and, uh, and Edie here. says it may have been from that chemical spill. Yeah, it might have been that chemical <laughs> spill. There's no ocean in Hawaii. Is that what we're talking about? The Hawaii chem? I mean, sorry, Ohio. The Ohio chemical spill or the Texas chemical spill? I can't keep track. Was there a chemical spill? Oh gosh, Matt, come out from under your rock. There was I a don't horrible, watch guys. I don't watch. There was watch a horrible news. train accident in Ohio, and the uh, Ohio River Basin is poisoned. <laughs> okay. At least that's what I. That doesn't sound very heard. good. My brother lives in in Ohio, and so I actually need to call him and see what his water is like, and if birds are falling out of the sky. I mean, I've heard all kinds of crazy stuff. So, but a few for you folks that are suffering through that, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't. I don't like to watch the news because it just uh, makes me unhappy. So I've. I'm on a news deep detox mm -hmm. and uh and don't have any qualms about that that's fine as long as the news isn't your backyard you know 
Jan well, Chemical Spill in Winston-Salem. You know, a lot of the news, <laughs> I hate to say it, is not really news. It's just just there for people to to see. And it's not entertainment, but it's something like social media where it's attention grabbing and you oh, feel like yeah. you're going to miss out if you don't. Fear of missing out. Yeah. My daughter has that. She has fear of missing out. But I think social media is one of the biggest cancers to human society that has ever existed. And uh, I know that's not what we're talking about, but. Mm -hmm. All right. So I've kind of got a little bit of an underpainting yeah. there. Uh, we're going to start there. pushing the range of value and tone here. Let's get a little bit darker. And I want a little bit more purple in there. Edie says the drawing is so much more beautiful than the photo. Oh, well, I hope it is when we're finished yeah, Matt's here. Matt's pushing those colors. I love it. That's good. And I'm, Princess I'm going real quick Roll here. Tide. Matt, you asked for that one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Trevor says, I'm with you, Matt. Same in Australia with the news. Yeah, you know, what, yeah, what, it's, what, it's what just... ruined the news was the 24-hour cable news cycle you know if news was just one hour in the evenings like it was for my grandparents they could leave out all the clickbait or not go over the same stories eight times in a day you know the the newscaster changes but the stories remain the same from hour to hour sometimes it's just too much All right, still working on this kind of little underpainting area before I really get the, the strong highlights in there. Yeah. Um, and trying to figure out how loosey-goosey we're going to make these. Now let's go ahead and get a little bit of that yellow-green in here that I mentioned. And uh, him points out, him Smith points out that getting sketchy is not social media. Of course, that's correct. We don't consider YouTube. No, social, no, no. When I'm media. talking, I'm talking about Instagram and stuff like that, TikTok. where people are just. Facebook, where people are constantly comparing themselves to other people, and people are only posting uh, things that they think other people want to see or the, the image that they want to, pre to present themselves to other people. And all it does is, uh, you know, make people feel bad about themselves. And yeah. send a uh, number on our, on our kids. Yeah, and, and it makes uh, people feel like they're missing out or their life is not good or uh, makes people who are lonely even more lonely. It's, it's, it's not a good thing. And um, I don't know what the solution is, but um, it, I, I definitely don't think it's, it's a good thing for, for people. And I know that people love those platforms and stuff, but. Just expressing myself here as I express myself in this pastel drawing. <laughs> All right. A um, wave of social media news <laughs> crashing down upon it, crushing us. Yes, that's exactly what's happening. All right. A lighter gray here, right over the top of some of that yellow green. We're going to get a little Brenda bit more variety. Brenda says she only uses Instagram for dog videos. Brenda, I like cat videos. I'm, I'm, I'm like the stereotypical person who goes home and watches cat videos and just laughs and laughs and tries to get his family to watch, but nobody cares. Yeah, I'm allergic to cats. so <laughs> I love cats. I like dogs too. Don't don't miss, don't get me wrong there. But yeah, if you stay if you stay on the innocent side of the social media um, platforms, you know, I mean, I like to, I I have only one social media account that I use, and uh, I really don't post. I use it just to look at information, and it's about F one. So I like hang out in F one Twitter sometimes just uh on race days you know just to to get uh just to be connected with the other people that are wa are watching at the same time and we're definitely not talking about the news we're trying to escape from it <laughs> okay we're gonna go ahead and start bringing some of this spray up brenda loves cats from a distance also allergic yeah, I don't. I don't have any beef with cats. I just. Oh, that paper's doing its job now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at it. It's like magic. Yeah, it is. That's great. Just pull a little bit oh, off great. the top there. 
more concentrated we want it, we can make it a little bit more concentrated. But I don't want to lose these little pops of color here and there. They're kind of coming in between. Mm -hmm. Joan says, don't know how many, oh, don't know much about pastels, but you have many, many layers. How do you know if the tooth will hold all of the layers? Well, that's a good question. That's why it's so yeah, important to work with a paper that uh, has a bit of texture or tooth associated with it. Uh, because not all papers will be able to to accept this many layers. Mm -hmm. So you want to have, uh, you want to be working on paper that has a texture associated with it. And pasta, all pastel papers, uh, for the most part, are going to have that. And they all have their own you. texture. You know, this one's different than the Mitant's paper, but if you guys are using that out there, I'll bet you're getting some pretty good broken color effects as well. Yeah, that's a, that's another good paper. All right, um, this is a, a light blue here. We're going to start making some of that sea foam and some of those colors showing through. And we're going to save the spray for the last bit here. Now, some of these values down here at the bottom are obviously a little bit darker, but because of the tom and, um, well, because of the tom, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, consideration here I'm not extension. going to uh, really make them too much darker. Uh, the contrast is going to be nice down here anyway. Lori says, I wondered how you were going to do the spray. It looks great. Well, the spray is not done yet, actually. Maria says, I'm amazed there's still tooth on that paper. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that. there's still, still a lot picking, of tooth. Still picking yeah, this up is, the texture down there. Yeah, this is, like I said, this paper has a laid pattern, mm -hmm. um, and there's plenty of tooth here. You can just keep putting layers and layers and layers. There is a limit, of course, but... Yeah, Buddy says, can you do it this way because there is still tooth? That's right. I mean, if he was out of tooth, he would just, that those lighter colors wouldn't be laying down like they are across the dark. Right. You wouldn't, you wouldn't see them. They would kind of just basically. Maybe cut through it or something like that. Yeah, or they would mix. Yeah. All right, let's get a little bit of that lighter blue and a few of these areas to kind of create a little bit more of a sense of movement. Carla says, can you mix oil pastel and regular pastel? Um, not really. They're not intended to be mixed. That doesn't mean that you can't. I have a friend that uses really thick pastel sticks and oil paint together um, because of the effect that she gets that is unusual you know with these little crumbly bits of pastel in her um, in her oil paint she's going for a specific sort of style and look so yeah you can break those rules and use oil pastel and pastel together but I couldn't tell you how they're gonna really react because I haven't ever done that um, in, in, and they're not really intended uh, to be used together in mixed media, but yeah, I, I would think that would be somewhat of an exercise in frustration. Yeah, I, feel, I, I would be. Um. I, I'm, I'm getting frustrated <laughs> just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, the sticky, the sticky oil pastels and the dusty loose uh, dry pastels would get all over the top of the oil pastels, and um, and get stuck. I wouldn't be able to manipulate it as well. They they share the name pastels, but boy, they are really different from each other. Mm -hmm. uh, you should think about oil pastels as partially dried paint. It's a little bit more like painting. Well, pa dried pastels are too to some degree, but the oil pastels are, are definitely wet. Okay, we'll bring some of that lighter value right down under here. Some of that light is getting through there in that little... That little corkscrew or whatever that little opening is it's so nice down there yeah. maria asks if you had no more tooth could you use colored pencils um it, over the pastel you can use a very sharp pastel pencil and you could you try go. to use a colored pencil over the top um, but it, again, it's it's not the it's pastel so is going to take harder. up so much of the tooth that it yeah. that it is. I have used pastels and colored pencils together, but you really have to think about um, how you're using them. So it's not necessarily oh I've run out of tooth. It's time to switch to the to the colored pencils. That mm. 
that's not going to work very well. Mm-hmm. But if you're if you kind of plan out your drawing and you want to have uh, maybe redefine some of the lines with uh, a colored pencil, you can do that in some situations. But for the most part, um, I don't think that the pastels and the colored pencils really work well together. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, let's go ahead and add some white or a very light uh, yellow. I'm not sure if this is white or a very light yellow. It doesn't matter. Um, they're very similar. As long as it's yeah. the lightest thing in your artwork. Right, it's and that's be, it's what it's be going white. to be here. Yeah. And I am starting to reach the limits of the paper up there that last application. The bicycle lady asks, Matt, how do you choose the initial size of paper to use? Um, I choose this, the, well, the shape of the paper is proportional to the reference. Uh, so that's something a little bit different, but maybe that's helpful. Um, but choosing the size, I, I try to think about the medium that I'm using and how much time I have to complete the drawing. And uh, that's, for getting sketchy, that's, that's how I decide that. Um, and for the other drawings that I create that aren't, you know, timed drawing exercises, <laughs> um, again, I think about the medium that I'm using and what a comfortable size would be for me. Now, um, every artist is different, and some people are going to prefer working on larger surfaces, and um, some people are going to prefer to work on large, uh, smaller surfaces. So you kind of have to think about the medium that you're using and what's your comfort level uh, for large or small. So there's no like hard fast rule on what size you should be making your artwork or you know a lot of people think that bigger is better but not necessarily. You might could charge more money for a bigger painting or drawing but we had a couple of questions and a comment about adding fixative and then maybe being able to continue to work if you feel like you're running out of tooth. And I think you could do that. I feel like I've done that with charcoal before. When I was working on regular drawing paper that had no sort of texture at all, I feel like I did a little bit of workable fixative spraying. It's a long time ago and was able to work a little bit more because the fixative does create a little bit of a sandy texture on the top of your artwork. You can give that a go if you just have another layer or two. Okay, let's see if this was white or not. I don't think that was. I think that was, oops. I think that was light yellow. This is a little bit stronger. Pat says you need a schmink, schminka white. Am I saying that right? A schminky. Schminky white. The Rembrandt works fine. And Brenda says, oh my, OMG, that's beautiful. I can almost hear the roar. Oh, thank you. You've, you've got your head in a conch shell, don't you, Brenda? You're listening to conch shells out there. <laughs> You know, I always heard as I was a kid, like probably the rest of you out there, that if you listen to a conch shell, it sounds like the ocean. And I never understood that. It doesn't sound like the ocean at all. I think it. I think it's the, the swooshing sound of your blood in your head. Well, my, my swooshing okay. is pretty constant. Does yours sound like waves breaking? Well, it sounds like <laughs> shh, you know, and that's kind of how the beach sounds, you know, to that constant shh. Sounds more like... Uh, when, when the TV would go off around midnight when I was a child, the programming ended. <laughs> Constant white like noise. Like white noise? Yeah. Okay, we've got one minute and 26 seconds it, left. It's hard to believe that programming used to just end and there would be nothing on TV channels. Yeah, that Nowadays, is hard to believe, isn't it? You know. Princess asks, what would be a suggestion for a first experience with a medium that requires blending? With a medium that requires blending? And now, um, Princess, I wonder if you mean like a like a softer medium that can blend out like charcoal or even graphite, or if you specifically are referring to like a color medium where you're doing color mixing in there. Yeah, it's not necessarily the... It's not necessarily the um, the blending aspect of the medium that would be the challenge. It would it would be more the medium itself, and and like 
pastel is similar to charcoal both of those mediums are typically blended but they're they're also very different too so mm -hmm. Um, and did she ask the easiest for a beginner? I think so. And I, honestly, I think ch uh, charcoal is, is, the, is the best medium to learn to draw with. Yeah, charcoal is a pretty good place to start. It's where, it's where most of the, you know, quote unquote, old masters, you know, they worked with things like uh, charcoal and uh, Conte crayons that are also sort of smearable. Um, so it gives you a lot of workability. Oh. You can add it. You can, oh, time's up. Time's up. Time's up. You can add it and you can take it away and you can spread it out. You can lighten it with a paper towel or a rag. So it's very workable. Charcoal. All right. I'm going to stay true to the timer this time <laughs> and uh, say this is it finished. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you got all those light marks in there. And I love yeah. the way the spray looks coming off that top, that, that, that uh, white water there in the top left corner. It looks great. Yeah. Thanks. I, I did want this to kind of have a little bit of an abstract uh, feel associated with it, even though we still looks like a wave and kind of looser. Um, and uh, I think that's what uh, this drawing kind of accomplished. Mm -hmm. uh, Got a little so. bit more variety in color than I see in the original reference. Yeah. I like your green better. It feels more real to me, actually. Yeah, the, I, the, 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 the type of color I'm used to seeing in an ocean wave. Right. I, yeah, I agree. Those greens are there and the yeah. purples are there. But, um, you know, um, what was I going to say here? I got kind of wrapped up in pulling the tape off. Um, uh, yes. There are some areas where the value probably could be a little bit darker. Um, so that's that's my initial critique of this is that uh, some of these areas, especially down here at the bottom, yeah, uh, we could have some darker values but i know you guys want to see this with the the tape pulled yeah, we're off gonna, so we're gonna, the tail of the tape do that and say. then we'll check how the voting is going but he says matt color spray just everything is so great brenda says tape off please all right there so it the is, tape no is tape. off and the borders are nice and sharp there um, i do think you know looking at comparing them the photo reference is pretty dark or mm -hmm. it's looking pretty dark on my screen anyway yeah. um compared to the drawing and i would I, I like the lighter version well maria says that she's taken a screenshot of both so that she can see how not to be a slave to the reference and so yeah i think some of our yeah, guests are appreciating yeah. seeing how you work away from the reference a little bit um and still have a successful artwork when you're done yeah, you, yeah, and that's a, a thing that I think a lot of people um, should take note of. Yeah, because uh, we're the boss of our artwork, right? Not the reference, the reference works for us. And a lot of the artworks that you see here, if I don't destroy this one, um, <laughs> a lot of the artworks you see, you assume you have an idea of what the reference looks like, and if you were to see the reference, it is so a lot of times dramatically different from what you're drawing. Ours is not dramatically different, but it is different, mm -hmm. um, and. Um, that's really, honestly, that's the way everything you create should be, in my opinion. Well, we're going to have a lot more of that this season. All right. So now it's time for Ashley. And I'm just going to do a quick refresh of the poll here. Yeah, and we're going to take a look at the poll. I know what All Ashley right. is going to be doing next. So now it's time for... All of us to find out what Ashley is doing next. Oh, oh I'm getting excited. Oh, so, you know what that means. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it's time for Let's Get Creative with your contestants, Matt and Ashley. And now, tonight's Let's Get Creative Challenge. All right, there's Ashley waiting right there for what it's going to be. Um, so let's let me just make sure I got the right one, and let's see what prompt Ashley will be dealing with next week. And that mm, is no whammies, no whammies. Let's see what it is here. Oh, the suspense is killing me. And the answer is not your average. Pin. Mm, what does that mean? So, Not your average pin. Well, go Matt ahead and, and we'll put in your guesses now, <laughs> and then we'll reveal um, the specifics of that prompt next week. Is no, that right? No, oh, no, no. Right specifics oh, okay. are right right oh, okay. now. Okay. There it is. Not your average pin. 
means create a drawing using non-traditional drawing tools. Mm -hmm. In other words, sticks, stones, feathers, whatever. All right. But it just can't be a traditional it's drawing gonna be tool. A, uh, we're going to use ink, but we're not going to use our regular pens. Okay. Traditional so, pens, right? so we know we're going right? to be using ink, and Ashley will be choosing the reference. So, you know, last season we had the references and the, the medium right. um, at the mercy of the wheel. And this season, we're going back and picking our own references based on the creative prompts that we come up with. Now, if you want to vote for next week's prompt, I will open up the voting next Wednesday morning before we go live, of course. It'll be on the community tab just like this was. And then uh, at the end of next week's Getting Sketchy, we will reveal what I will be drawing or what prompt I will be following the following week. Now. Um, obviously, we have 14 prompts up there, if you if you noticed on the screen. <laughs> so uh, all of them are going to be chosen. Um, we're, I'll try to put up a fresh five each week, uh, but some of you are going to see some repeating that, that happens there. On YouTube, I can only put five options in the voting area. So uh, again, that's why there's only five options instead of 14, which is really great for me trying to keep up with what buttons I need to push over here for our game show theme. Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed tonight. I definitely enjoyed uh, creating the first drawing for Getting Sketchy Season 10 here. Just to remind you, if you don't know, we've got nine more drawings that we're going to do, each of them a timed drawing exercise with the focus on creativity. And then at the end of the season, we'll have a review episode uh, before we take another break. But there's still... 10 more weeks ahead of you guys for getting sketchy. Remember, if you like this video, give it a like, um, make a comment below, um, tell us what you think about the drawing, of course. And um, of course, if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. I really yes. appreciate it. And don't forget about the membership program at virtualinstructor.com. There's a link in the description below. Uh, Ashley, do you have anything else for the folks out there? Well, I'm looking at some of the suggestions as to non-traditional tools I could use to make a drawing with. And Nicole <laughs> threw out a turkey baster. Ooh, that's interesting. That would be interesting. I don't think the size restrictions will uh, will allow me to paint or draw with a turkey baster, but uh, uh, provocative. Provocative. Yeah, that is provocative. You know, there are so many things you can do with a turkey baster. So many things. <laughs> provocative. Um, I think that's a great suggestion. <laughs> Maybe I should have just put turkey baster up there. Yeah. Uh, no. Anyway, we're going to head over to the virtual instructor now. Uh, actually, we're not moving, but uh, we're going to be broadcasting live over at the virtual instructor next uh, for the live lesson series. And now I've got to get all these shapes and values out of my mind and focus on lines. Back to uh, lines. Because I'm going right. to be drawing with pen and ink, and I have pastel dust everywhere so i'm going to be cleaning that up <laughs> really quickly for those of you who are going to be joining us over there we'll see you in just a few minutes and for the rest of you we're going to go ahead and sign out for this evening and as always i wish you all the very best in your artistic success good night everybody <laughs>